Alrighty, playing a little bit of Rumble, and uh, I guess I want to uh, touch base again on uh, uh, basically the cons about buying a CyberPower VZ. So, first off, I would have to say that customer service is not existent, and that they aren't going to help you with any problems that you have whatsoever. You have to fight, be on hold all the time. I guess if you call, you might get stuff done, but I always just use email, and I gotta be honest, I never have once got them to do a single thing, even email me back. Uh, next up is the Wi-Fi adapter that they give you for the CyberPower PC. It's very, very bad, like incredibly bad. It's a TP link, and you think it wouldn't be terrible, but it is honestly probably the worst one I've ever used. Any $5 one will be better. Uh, next up, I would say heat, like again, I said that before, is a major issue, uh, mainly because the case only has two small little slits at the front and nothing else, and only has one uh, exhaust fan, which is not enough for a high-end gaming PC, well, higher-end. Uh, next I would have to say the power supply and the only reason that it's not very good is just because uh, it is a no-name it has nothing on it I haven't had any problems with it I took mine out of my PC and put it into a weaker PC the Ryzen 3 with the uh, well originally it was a Ryzen 3 and a 770 HD and then it was uh, 970 and then for a short time it was an R9 380X and then it's a 1060 and now it's the 580 and no problems whatsoever with the power supply and uh yeah but th the problem is that it doesn't have an actual brand name that's one problem with the cyber power pc is you never really know what you're going to get the only two things that you're for sure going to get is the graphics card they list and the processor so if you're looking at the gtx 1060 you're going to get a gtx 1060 and an i5 8400 for sure which is a great processor I can stream on it no problem, I can record on it no problem, rendering with more RAM is fine. Uh, next is you'll get a random, 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 random uh, RAM. <laughs> yeah, that's ironic. Uh, I got XPG, I do know other people that got uh, completely different, but the only positive thing is you never get a no-name, it's never nothing on it and just the green chip, it will always have a case on it, which in that case it's half decent it will either be one eight gigabyte stick or two fours uh two fours is obviously better uh for rendering issues because you have two different entities loading at the same time rather than just the one but if you are planning to upgrade to 16 i would suggest if you do high get the one eight like i did to just get one extra stick and don't do any more than that it 16 is more than enough ditch this um, the motherboard is normally a bazooka, uh, sometimes you'll get some pro gaming one. Um, yeah, above all, like, it's really not a bad PC, I would highly recommend when, it, when it's on sale, or if you don't know what you're doing, I still recommend sales. On Amazon Prime, it goes down to $650, and on, uh... Black Friday went down to 650 so those are the two best days I would say is to buy a CyberPower PC. Actually, going back to school, they do have some sales too. Um, I like mine from Amazon because Amazon customer services actually exist. Like, they actually kind of give a shit about you. I'll steal this. Mm. Above all, I build and buy PCs a lot, actually, and uh, the CyberPower, other than the case, the power supply, the random RAM that you get, the terrible customer service, and the TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi adapter, it's really not that bad. Like, the, the parts that you should change r right away is the Wi-Fi adapter. Really, you should be using Ethernet. Either way, you'll get a... Uh, you'll get better internet connection. And uh, the power supply, which you can find a better 500-watt power supply for about 30 bucks on Amazon. 
Now, everything doesn't need to be replaced right away. You can pop it out of the box and be perfectly fine. The thing will work. But uh, later, uh, if you feel as if you're going to cause damage to your PC for whatever reason, I would highly suggest the power supply being changed, the uh, Intel Core processor uh, fans, the heatsink, that should honestly be changed. Those are two things that would probably set you back 60 bucks, and then you'll have a much more reliable PC in a sense. Um, Sadly, changing out the fans just isn't enough for that case. It just has uh, not enough slits to allow airflow in, so definitely uh, changing that up would be nice. How are some of my shots hitting this guy and other ones aren't, and I didn't move whatsoever? Yeah, well, either way. Um, you can try drilling holes into the front of it. I used dust covers and kept removing it every once in a while for me, but uh, I just did not like that because I noticed still dust was getting in. Oh, headshot. Well, I killed a streamer. Yeah, but above all, like, right out of the box, I would still highly recommend it. There are just a couple things that are just kind of upsetting. The power supply especially, considering it's an absolute no-name. And the terrible customer service when you're paying top dollar for for something. You kind of expect to get a little bit of customer service. Oh, hello. Psycho. Let's go. How did my shotgun only do that much damage? Um. Yeah, even changing out the PC case can be pretty inexpensive, and uh, the case that it comes in is actually a cooler master. Which normally, that size of a cooler master uh, comes with a glass panel, and glass actually holds a lot less heat than plastic. This plastic siding on that one is, uh, it gets very, very hot. Like, you can touch the side and feel that it's got a really warm touch. I've used the glass one when I did my friend's build, and uh, heat's not an issue with his, his PC whatsoever. Um, there is also the smaller one that I have, and that one also is fine because there's not as much distance from the front panel to the back panel, so the airflow continuously keeps going. Uh, with the big one that the CyberPower PC gives you, that I imagine is just a cheap knockoff of the original one, they just didn't add the bottom bracket, so they give you a plastic piece. It is way too big for those 1,000... I think the fans that it comes with are 1,200 plus 10%, so I would say roughly 1,650 RPM versus like a 2,000 RPM that will uh, spin faster and therefore be pumping in more air and then air will cause uh, positive energy and then push it out. Um, it, it just can't, uh, can't do it. So, and I also changed out the fans and still... It wasn't worth it. Uh, paying 50 bucks or more for new fans versus buying a new case for 60. I would just buy a new case and, yeah, just throw the fans in that you already have with everything. All you would need to do to do that is just buy a static wrist preventer uh, just to ground the PC to you so that way in case you have any static electricity on your hands you're not going to fry any pieces and if you follow the steps properly all you would have to do is take out the RAM. well actually you wouldn't even need to take out the RAM really you would just need to unplug the power supply move all that take out the fans uh, take out the GPU uh, slide out the motherboard put the new motherboard into the new case and then power supply in so on and so forth I really need to start uh, actually trying I'm gonna use up the rest of my shields. Lance right next to him does absolutely no damage. <laughs> Perfect. 
So I would highly recommend this thing. Uh, I would recommend to my friends the i5 and the GT 1060 is a really good combination. You can do things for cheaper, like I did the i3 and the 1060, a whole PC build for about $350, which is insane, but I scoured the internet for about a month and a half looking for parts. Going on to bids that end at really weird hours because I work really, really weird shifts, so I'm actually able to constantly watch my phone. Oh my god. Um, the keyboard and mouse, that's another story. I haven't used the actual one that comes with the, uh, the GTX 1060 and the i5. Um, I like the mouse that I have, preferably, and I do know that that gaming keyboard is meh. It is more than usable, but, uh, it's, it's no real gaming keyboard, that's for sure. Holy more these places are not house. Oh shit, I'm coming, buddy. Another good thing about the uh, PC is it comes with a SSD and they actually put uh, Windows 10 on the SSD. And uh, a lot of people say that building a PC is, uh, oh, it's so easy and blah, blah, blah. And in fact, it is easy to actually physically put it together. But uh, the hard part is sitting and waiting for an entire day for every single Windows file to be up to date because that freaking sucks. And then nothing is more of a piss off than putting a PC all together, going to power it up, and then it won't turn on. You finally solve that problem and then it doesn't show a display. You finally solve that problem, and then you have to download all your freaking games, and so on and so forth. It is just, uh, it's a big headache. Oh, thank you whoever stole my kill, that was really cool. I'm not a big fan of this heavy shotgun in this mode. Wow, this game is so close, I gotta really start trying. And it looks like I got the most kills in the game. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, above all, I would still give the, uh... Hmm. I gave the last one, the RX 580, a 7 out of 10.
and I think the 1060 and the i5 is nice. The RX 580 is better, but the fact that they put the SSD in there and actually put Windows on the SSD, it kind of saves you a lot of time because putting your stuff over to an SSD after you already have it, cloning it, having to make sure that you don't fuck it up is kind of a pain in the ass. So I would have to go with an 8 out of 10 for the price, especially if you get it for 650, easily 10 out of 10. You can't make the computer for less money.